Here we are. We have Here we a, are. Yep, we have a story for the third week of Lent, and we are now moving into the Gospel of John. It's a story from John 2. Uh, Tom will tell it to us, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. You ready, Tom? Ready. So Jesus, he, he, <laughs> he had a major event of demonstrating his wonder at the wedding at Cana. It was a great celebration. And the festival of the Jews was near, and so Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found people in the temple selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at the tables and making a whip of cords, he, he drove out all of them, including the sheep and the cattle. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he said to them, to those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house shall consume me. And uh, Jesus said to them, or the Jews said to, uh, to, to Jesus, uh, what sign can you give us for doing this? And he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And they said, what? This temple has been under construction for 46 years and, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But he was talking about the temple of his body. And after he had been raised, his disciples remembered the word that he had said. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Thanks, Tom. So this is a, a different side of Jesus. I don't think we've seen. Of course, we're pretty early in the Gospel of John here. <laughs> Well, and the story of the cleansing of the temple comes at a very different place. You know, it's before the passion and the ministry in Jerusalem in the other, in the synoptics. But in John, uh, it comes right after the wedding at Cana and very early in the gospel. So is this a, is a new dimension of Jesus' character. Yeah, so is it in all four gospels? Yep, the story is. Yeah, okay. Uh, but it's quite different. Oh. All right, since we're talking about that, besides the loc location, um, how else is it different? And why And why do you think John put it early rather than later as it is in the synoptics? Do we know? Well, we don't know. We don't know. But the impact of it is that it establishes Jesus as a prophet uh, and, as a, and it establishes the prophecy of the resurrection. Uh, right. So it sets the immediate context of the all the things that follow in the context of the promise of the resurrection and of uh, Jesus being established as both a prophet and as uh, one who will be raised from the dead. Right. We you know we've been in Mark and there Jesus comes on the scene more as a a healer, I guess, and a teacher. He goes around proclaiming and healing and casting out demons. Um, so, but here we're getting a prophetic role early on. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, were there other prophets? Jesus. Well, let me back up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this isn't sweet Jesus. <laughs> and this is not I, sweet Jesus. This is not sweet Jesus. And sometimes, I mean, you've told me that some, uh, Interpreters point to this story as no, Jesus wasn't nonviolent because he was very violent here. I mean, how would you respond to, to that interpretation? Well, it is in the context of the tradition of the prophets. 
So Jeremiah, you know, went around in his underwear and uh, <laughs> Isaiah was, uh, was a very confrontational prophet. Elijah uh, killed 400 prophets of Baal. Uh, so there is a tradition of the prophets being associated with violent actions, but not Jesus. Uh, nobody is hurt by this demonstration. It's a prophetic demonstration of his authority that in which he interprets then his cleansing of the temple, that is his uh, protest, uh, as it was wholly nonviolent, nobody's hurt. Uh, and what happened undoubtedly was that uh, after he had overturned the tables of the money changers and driven those out and so on, went on the rest of the afternoon, they simply came back, they brought the cattle back, they set up their tables again, and they continued business as usual. So this was Jesus' prophetic action, and that's why uh, the Jews asked him, you know, what sign can you give us uh, for doing this? Uh, so they weren't uh, violent in response. They saw it as a prophetic action and wondered what sign this would be, and he interpreted it in relation to his death. We Be call gracious. this, I guess the tradition calls this the cleansing of the temple. I'm, I'm looking at the story. I don't really see anything here. You know, Jesus doesn't say that. But he, what he says is, stop making my father's house a marketplace. So he seems to be very right. upset about that. You want to right. why he's, you know, why he's so upset about this, that he would do it's this. It's the transformation of the temple from a place of prayer and of uh, gathering together. Uh, as a community of worship into then a place of uh, a marketplace. This was, uh, you know, what the authorities were doing. It was an international center. People brought money from all over the world, different coins. So the money changers would exchange the coins for the temple coins, which it was necessary to have in order to do any uh, actions in the temple of buying uh, sacrificial animals. Uh, and they uh, had them there in the temple of the Gentiles uh, for uh, in the court of the Gentiles. Uh, so it transformed the whole atmosphere of the place. And Jesus was protesting this as a prophet uh, fighting for uh, his the the temple as a place of prayer. Is there anything else in the background of this story in its original context that we need to know to understand what's going on? I mean, it comes oh. as a surprise because there is nothing earlier in the story about the prophecy of the death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, uh, thing that he will be raised in three days raises a major question right at the beginning of the gospel after the uh, wedding at Cana, this joyful uh festival of uh, of love uh, and so jesus then is established as a prophetic figure as one with authority who fights for uh with zeal uh for the temple uh, and in the context of the post-war situation jesus you know showing that he was a zealot but he was a zealot for the temple and for it being a place of worship and prayer. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you think we should take from this story in today's context? It establishes this story is uh, in a way a unique story uh, of Jesus' establishment of his authority, uh, of his power uh, to transform uh, the practices that had become customary in the tradition in the temple uh, into a, a place of, uh, of piety and of prayer. Uh, so Jesus is established here as a major prophet right at the beginning of the gospel and uh, uh, who is then fighting for uh, 
for prayer, for a place of uh, worship and sacrifice that will be holy and uh, and not a place of uh, of economic uh, injury, you know, uh, involvement. Anything else you want to say for the, what's that phrase, <laughs> the, the good, <laughs> for the common well-being, for us understanding the story <laughs> in its original context or in today's and with regard to peace and justice? Any other thoughts on that? Well, Jesus is here established as a prophet of peace and justice. Peace, nonviolence, fighting for a place of prayer. Uh, and as, uh, uh, as one who would be recognized later then in the story as the Messiah, as one who was bringing about a new time, a new age. And it is established right at the beginning of the Gospel of John uh, that Jesus is this, uh, the, the this incredible person uh, who is uh, establishing a new order uh, in the community of Israel. Yeah, and quite fearless. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's going up against a lot of power here in the temple, and he recognizes what it is that's going to happen as a result of his involvement in this. Right. And he is does that, it anyway. Yeah. Yep. Is that it will lead to his death. Yeah. And uh, so this is all set in the context of uh, the promise of the resurrection, mm -hmm. uh, which his disciples remembered. Yeah, that's right. Uh, celebrated. Yep. Yep. Well, it does seem like an appropriate story for the season of Lent. So... It's a okay. story for examination. Yeah, right. A kind of examination of conscience. Yeah. All right. Now, well, thanks for joining us, everybody, and have a good week. Right. Bye. Bye.